just referring about what you said before, uh, the concept of evolutionary biology, uh, that's something that I've been looking, um, there's actually a lot of interest for many people around that, how uh, you can draw similarity to that. And I think it was the case, and there's been quite a lot of work being done by some anthropologists that uh, evolution occurs when the more, not competition, but more cooperation. So the greater the level of cooperation between a certain species will draw greater uh, evolution. So if you draw that parallel back to uh, digital ec uh, economies, um, I think a Bitcoin, uh, going forward, there will be two type, a macro type of currencies, and I wanted to know what your feedback about my vision is. is one is sort of like a Bitcoin, uh, model where it's a rivalry game, so it's a sort of total sum game. Either you have it or I have it, and it's trustless. And it's sort of like Chicago School away. Um, and then I think there's going to be another model where um, it actually, you know, it's a multi-time player. When you have then identities and you associate some metrics of reputation beyond people, then they interact many times with each other. I think there's a sort of like the needs of cooperative coin as well, and, and a cooperative sort of like relationship economy. Um, so I just wanted to know what your position was about it. Thank you. Yeah, that was, uh, that was very, uh, very clear. So I think two things about what you said. Um, cooperation is a very important part of evolution. And one of the things I didn't talk about was the concept of um, cross-pollination or horizontal transfer. So Modern biology identifies the fact that a lot of evolution happens through horizontal transfer of DNA between species or across genetic lines, not just parent to child, but also across. So we take genetic material from viruses, viruses take genetic material from us, give it to bacteria. There is a mishmash of cross-species exchange of um, blueprints, of ideas, of successful systems. Um, that end up jumping from one species to another. And I found that really interesting, because there is a very cr close relationship between that and the open source environment in which cryptocurrencies have grown up. Because one of the really important genetic traits of the new form of internet money is that it is all open source, almost all open source. Uh, which means that if somebody comes up with a good idea and they write an implementation, that little piece of DNA can be borrowed by someone else, um, and they can in incorporate it in their system. Um, and I think we shouldn't underestimate how rapidly Bitcoin itself is progressing, and um, how much it is changing, both internally in how it works, um, but also in some of the higher layers above it. And I think when you have a team of developers that are very talented, and they can take very good ideas from other systems and adopt them, and then run them on top of a six billion dollar, seven billion dollar, eight billion dollar economy, um, that creates a very interesting environment. So I think we're going to see a lot more uh, cooperation, not necessarily within the currency, but between different currency implementations through their open source exchange of genetic material. Now, to talking about consensus algorithms as systems that are more cooperative versus competitive, um, I think it's interesting to look at consensus systems like that. Uh, there is some interesting work being done, for example, about incorporating concepts of um, basic income, for example, uh, which is a, a different political perspective than some of the stuff that Bitcoin does. And I think you're going to see these ideas evolve over time. Um, identity and reputation, I think, are double-edged swords. They are something that works really well in small communities of up to a hundred or a couple hundred people, um, and is part of our social makeup. But um, if you try to take those same reputation systems and scale them beyond a certain point, they start collapsing. Um, and then you have systems that actually become problematic. So if you take reputation systems, and I've talked about this before, but it's something I feel very strongly about. Reputation systems require um, infrastructure they're running on to be a close-knit society of humans that forget. And forgetting is one of the features of reputation systems, because when you have a small society and that society is capable of forgetting, that means that it is capable of forgetting as part of it, and you put it into a mechanistic realm where you strip those very human characteristics, and it becomes a very um, 
rigid, inflexible system. We're already seeing this on Facebook uh, and other social media structures. You're seeing very rigid systems of reputation and collaboration and social interaction that are guided by mechanistic algorithms which are written without accountability by a very, very small number of people who can control enormous populations. I'm not sure that's a good way to go. So, collaborative systems, consensus through collaboration, I think are great ideas and they're going to evolve. But whether they can also scale um, is another question, and whether we really want to do reputation at scale, um, we can. And now the question we have to ask is, should we? And do we really want to do reputation at scale? So a bit broader perspective. But thanks for that question. Great.